Hi, and welcome to Meetings and Math. You are here for seven point preview, escaping the square root forest. Really what it is, is a preview of square roots and cube roots. And that's our essential question. What are square roots and cube roots? Today, you'll need your dartboard dots on section seven point preview. A pen or a pencil, you might find a highlighter useful. Put away those calculators. You're not going to need them today. Have a positive attitude, perseverance, problem solving skills, and this time bring your listening skills because we're going to start off with a story. We're going to start off with a story about a magical forest and right here, that's you. Well, a version of you. In our magical forest, what this is, is a square root forest. And there's only one way to escape. And that is to have yourself a perfect square twin. What is that? Well, the only way to escape is to have perfect squares because this is a square root forest. Unfortunately, only one of you will get through the secret passage because that's what happens with square roots. For example, you may look like you are 16 but once you go through our secret passage, you really are four times four. And when you get through on the other side, you are only four. One of you disappears. That's why it's so magical. So let's look at this again. This time you are 100. And as you approach our magical tree, you split into 10 times 10. But as you leave, there is only one of you and you are 10. Your twin? Well, your twin wasn't so fortunate. Your twin vanishes into thin air. This is our magical square root forest. Now, you're on to your next adventure. On your next adventure, because we leveled up, you're in a cube root forest. And lo and behold, you find out that you are not a twin, but you're actually a triplet. So here you are needing to escape your cube root forest. And as you approach the exit, you split into triplets. But you find, again, just like in the square root forest, only one of you can escape. And the other two vanish, never to be heard of again. These aren't very happy for us, are they? No, no, they're not. But one of you will escape. Who will it be? So let's see an example. Here you are, happy as can be. You see the exit and you looking like you're really eight. As you approach, you find out and you remember, oh, we're really triplets. And you split into two times two times two because two times two times two is really eight. And as you approach and you go through, two of the triplets vanish. And as you leave on the other side, only you are left as a two. Again, these are not happy places, but you did escape. So these are your square root and your cube root magical forests. So what does this look like? It is because a square root is the result of multiplying an integer by itself. So a square root, I can take any integer I want. Seven times seven is 49. But I also could take negative seven times negative seven and I still get 49 because a negative times a negative is a positive. That's why it works out so nicely. So if I want to Show it algebraically, I say a squared is equal to a times a. So this is what was happening in our magical forest was you were approaching the tree looking like this a squared. And as you got closer, you split into the a times a. And then when we did the square root, you were only left with the a. And in the next lesson, we'll learn a whole lot more about that. Then we have cube numbers. Cube numbers is the result of using a whole number and a multiplication three times. So you're gonna multiply it three times. So for example, 
I'm going to go a times a times a, and then we write it as a to the third. So 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 3 times 3 times 3. So 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 again would be 27. 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 again would be 64. So it's just a way for us to have square roots and cube roots. So it is really important that we do some memorization. Uh, memorization of square roots and cube roots helps us work through the problems quickly. It's just like having our multiplication tables memorized. You already have probably the first 12 of these memorized if you have your multiplication tables memorized. So let's look at some now and some others that you need to memorize. I would definitely do some flashcards that will help you. So for example, one squared is one, two squared is four, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, and 10 squared is 100. Most of you probably have those ones memorized. The rest of them you probably get a little fuzzy on. 11 squared is 121. How do I remember that one? I have a little trick that when I was learning them, I did. And here, you, this is what I did. I would say the one and the one, I split them apart like this, one and one, and then I added these up to get the two. So 121. 12 squared, for whatever reason, that one came easily to me all the time. 12 squared is 144. 13 squared is 169. And then usually, if I know 169, then I just flip the 6 and the 9 to get to the next one for 196. And then 15 squared you is 225. Definitely have that one memorized. Now the rest of them are kind of a play on things we already know. So if I know 2 squared, then I know 20 squared. So I'm going to square the first one and double the amount of zeros I have. So square the 2 and double the zeros. So for 30 squared, I'm gonna square the three and double the zeros. So 900. For 40, I'm going to square the four and double the zeros. Okay, so then for 100 squared, I'm actually gonna take it as 10 squared. So I know 10 squared is 100 and then I'm gonna double the zeros. And then I'm gonna go put in parentheses so it makes sense. Or on that one, I could have just looked at doubling the zeros. So one, two, the first two, and then double it. Three, four. So either way, would have worked. And then 25 squared is 625. So 25 squared is one that you'll wanna memorize because if we start working with money, it tends to show up a lot. So this is a table that you want to get memorized. Definitely pause this, write this all down, and then start working on these as typical ones to memorize. Then there's some also perfect cubes that you want to have memorized. Definitely the first five are ones that you want memorized. Um, other ones that tend to show up a lot are like nine cubed. And as we have ones that show up a lot, come back to this table and write them in so that you don't have to get out a calculator and figure it out or figure it out longhand. This chapter, we are not going to use a calculator as much. We definitely are going to be relying heavily on multiplication tables if you don't have your multiplication facts memorized. So one cubed would just be one times one times one is one. Two cubed, so two times two times two. So the first two are four and then four times two, which is eight. So three cubed would be three times three times three. The first three is nine, so nine times three, which is 27. Four cubed would be four times four times four. The first four would be 16, and then 16 times four, which is 64. And then five times three, which would be five times five times five. 
So the first five times five is 25. And then five times 25, which would be 125. And then 10 to the third, you can also just use the fact that you know that when you take 10 to a number, this tells you how many zeros follows it. So it would be one followed by one, two, three zeros. Make sure it looks like a comma and not a decimal. And again, come up with more patterns that are going to help you and then add to this list as we continue to go through these. So there you have it, cubes and square roots, a little preview of those. What I would like you to do is I'd like you to retell that square root and cube root four story to someone you know, putting your own twist on it. See what you can remember. I can't wait to get into the rest of this chapter with you guys in the coming videos, and I will see you in those next videos. Remember, be kind to one another because we could all use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.